now. Listen up. Three, two, one. It's showtime. That's great. This is ridiculous. 99.3 The Truth. You can't handle the truth right now. Ooh. That's the stupidest thing I ever heard. Let's do it. Hit it. It's time for Max World. And here we go. Everybody here. Everybody here. Let's get it started. Call Matt, 244-0077, or text 809-0993. It's showtime, everybody! Showtime! Exclusively on 99.3 The Truth. It's seven minutes after four o'clock on the first day of November in the Lord's year 2016. 60 more days of 2016. Now, that that may not mean anything to anybody listening, but... um. I used to do uh, five-year, 10-year, and beyond projections for the radio stations and some of my businesses, and I don't think I ever did one into 2016 except for one business. I mean, to me, that's how... Hello, 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 Chris, over over here. You're watching, you're doing your phone thing again, little girl. Sorry, I'm working. What are you doing? <laughs> Answering, responding to emails that I need to get done here. But you're quick. on the radio here. You're, you're focused you talking, on me. You were talking about something that you found to be important. I didn't find it to be that important. You were talking about yourself and your business practices. Was I supposed to care about that? That's not what I was talking about. I was talking about the fact that 2016 seemed like a long, long, long ways away. Yeah, actually what happened is what you oh did is you stressed heavens. me out. You oh said I've got 60 God. days left into the end of the year and oh. I just thought to myself we have 60 days left to make budget. I'm paying. What is the budget? I'm not a, I'm not at privy to say. You right don't now. know what the budget I is. Do too. You do not. I do too. What I'm, is it? I'm paying attention, Mac, because we're about the same age and when I was No, sitting, you're older. When I was uh, in uh, the Early 90s and the 2000s, and I heard him talk about 2018. I thought, no way. There's no way this world will last till 2018, and it looks like we may get there. I bet we're going to last till 3018, the way this is going. And who knows what will happen then. All right, yesterday, I wanted to have a very important conversation about a good friend of mine who I believe is really hurting himself through the uh, abuse of food and electronics. Because if he's not eating something, then he's on his uh, girl phone texting. And uh, so today I thought I'd just run a test. And so I, I took this gentleman to lunch over at one of our favorite Chinese buffets. And you know what I found? Guess what I found, Chris? Oh, I'm sorry. I was looking at my cell phone. Guess what I found today? What was that? I ate more than this other person did. Really? And that was rare. Like, by the time I had my third salmon, I, I, you know how you when you go to a Chinese buffet, you just kind of lay the plate to the side? Yeah. And then, and then if they don't come to clear, then you lay another plate to the side? Right. The person that I was having lunch with had a dozen plates, because yeah. I counted them. Yeah, 12. Yeah. 12, that's... What's... That's usually a dozen. Yeah. I had Unless 14. You're a baker. I, you're a baker. Yeah, then it's a 13. I, I had 14. Because on what I did is I went through the sushi line, and I got one piece of sushi. and put. So I had 14 pieces of sushi. I'm just trying. I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to dodge your nose right now. It's 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 all Pinocchio. the way across the all the way across the <laughs> broadcast table here. Frank. Oh, I thought you had your no, hand up. No. Bob, do you like sushi? No. Why? Have you ever had sushi? I should ask you that. Because you're probably that little boy who says, Bobby, do you like Grandma's broccoli? No, Grandma, I don't. Have you ever tasted Grandma's broccoli? No, Mom, I haven't. Then how do you know you don't like it? Because it's green and it looks like it's growing things. Yes, Bobby. That's called asparagus. No, no. Broccoli. Yeah, I was raising a lot of fish. Yeah, oh yeah, back, back in New Jersey. Back in Jersey, I used to have a lot of fish. Yeah, and so no, no, none anymore? I mean, no Long John Silvers, no Captain Smiley's, no, you know, well, I, um, catfish, breaded I, catfish. The family doesn't like fish, so I tend not to do that unless the I go with somebody. family doesn't like fish. Right, but I do, and so if I have a chance, I'll go and have fish. Where's your favorite fish place? I don't know if I don't really have a favorite. I like Red Lobster. Long John Silvers? No. 
Oh. Red Lobster? Yes. That's like saying America's best hamburger is McDonald's. Some would say. So what, what's the best res, uh, seafood restaurant? Um, in Des Moines? Well, well, in the world. No, in Des Moines. Fish yeah. fillet? No, no. no. McDonald's a got fillet? a McDonald's no, has a pretty I mean, good that's f- a take off fish of fillet. Chick fillet. Oh, I fish oh. fillet. Oh, fish fillet. That's pretty um, funny. Patton's has really good seafood when it's on the menu. Mm. Uh, a lot of people would say bonefish. Mm. Uh, a lot of people would say waterfront seafood market. That's actually pretty good. Yeah, I know. Well, surprise, Junior! It's been there for thirty years. Yeah, you know. Where do you like to go eat fish? With Long John Silver's. That's not fish. It's not. No. Is it? It's chicken. Almost. Almost. It's sawdust. <laughs> no, actually, ironically, I'm the guy that goes to Long John Silver's and actually gets the chicken planks. I'm weird. Well, you just like the sprinkles. I do. I do. You I ever like ask the, for an order of sprinkles? For I 99 have. cents, they'll get you like a French fry package of sprinkles. You know, uh, uh, the more you know, here's a little tip. You know, back when I was in uh, high school, I was in a lot of rock and roll bands, and one of the guys in... Uh, 1874. 1874. And uh, one of the guys that was in a band uh, with me worked at Long John Silver's, and he would just have tons of that stuff. Oh. And we would, we'd put it on everything. I mean, you yeah. could put it on salad, you could put it on noodles, you could put whatever you want. It's just a... It's the a crumbly. Nice, the crumblies, that thing, the yeah. fried bits you know the g- fat <laughs> yeah. i mean there's, there's no nutrition value <laughs> oh but it tastes so and, good and have you, you know? ever have you ever gone to long john and i like long john silvers i mean i used to eat it all the time when i was north of 300 pounds yeah but um have you ever have you ever next time you're there and you get your fish or your yeah. chicken mm-hmm. very carefully with a knife or something like a razor blade peel off the bread and just look at the piece of chicken or the piece of fish it's almost non-existent. That's how much breading there is. Wow. And if you like breading. It's great. It's great stuff. Tasty goodness. Can you eat it Long John Silver's, Frank? Yes. I like fish, but I tend to like it cooked. Long John Silver's cooks their yes. fish. Who That's doesn't cook their fish? Sushi. Well, sushi. Oh, sushi. Why? I just never get... Do you think Jesus, all the fish that he ate was cooked? I just have a clue. You don't think ever he just gnawed into a good old piece of carp and just went... (laughs) I tend not to eat things raw. Why does that remind me of Gollum? Is anybody from the Lord of the Rings movies that... Gollum? Gollum. Is that a a character? Yes. Gollum? Mm -hmm. Is that two two syllables? Or Gollum? Gollum. Gollum. Two syllables, yeah. Gollum. Could be three. Gollum. Yeah. Comes from the noise that he makes when he coughs. How does he cough? Oh. Like, that's I really see. gross. It's disgusting. And, and, and what is it that reminds you of that? There's a scene in one of the films where he, he bites into a cold fish and does yeah. that. <laughs> it's really gross. That's what it reminded me of. And everybody who's seen Lord of the Rings knows what I'm talking about. Especially Michael Damastis. He would know. He would know. He'd be on the inside track. In fact, I'm uh, going to start reading The Hobbit again. What a good story. Why don't you just see the movie? It's two hours. Yeah. Book's way better. Really? Yeah, because it was written by a guy who knew what he was doing. <laughs> so you're saying the movie... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's, what what I'm, doing. that's kind of what I was saying. Okay. Can we, can we talk about Jesus for a minute? Uh, yes. Uh, this past Sunday was Reformation Sunday. and was that? Westkirk, that was, was that pretty flat. good? See, yeah. See, he was on key. Go, do that again. Hey, look, there's Gollum eating the nasty fish on the screen for those watching at home. On that looks like Bob, Bob without his hat on. Oh, does. that's not very nice. Well, it does, though. Bob is, it does. Bob is better looking than that. I don't think so. That's <laughs> All hilarious. right, go ahead. You were talking. Sidetrack. Yeah. Wholehearted. Wholehearted. No, I was saying that noise reminded me of the bagpipe bagpipe sound that we had at uh, worship on Sunday. At, you had uh, bagpipes. We did. Uh, you know, uh, West Kirk Presbyterian, Scottish Presbyterian Church, and oh. so uh, for Reformation Sunday, oh. uh, traditionally we have yeah. a bagpiper lead everybody into the sanctuary. Was yeah. that the 500th anniversary of the Re- 500? This is, years. We have started the 500th year. So this uh, 2017, uh, we'll celebrate 500 years of the, since the Reformation. Well, I, I'm thinking about going and broadcasting live from uh, Wittenberg. Is that right? Yes. Uh, for uh, the Reformation 
500 year celebration next year in Germany. Fascinating. Might be Wittenberg with a V since it's Germany. But it'd be a W. I thought it was Wittenberg Castle. It's a Wittenberg. Wittenberg, okay. But it, I think it's written with a W. I think it is too. I think it's but pronounced, pronounced with a V. Yeah. It's with a W, pronounced V. It's just so sad. So it took me a while to find Psalm 86. 86. That's where we were. I was trying to remember where we were going to be. Uh-huh. We we're going to be in Psalm 86. Yeah. Uh, verse uh, uh, 12. 11. 12. Start, starting in verse 11 is pretty good, but verse 12 is where we get that wholehearted phrase, or yeah. at least where the Lord directed you. Yeah. Yeah. Why don't you, uh, and, and just so people know, on uh, Saturday night, I'm driving back from Wall Lake, Iowa. No, I wasn't vis- visiting Cookie's Barbecue. Uh, some kids of mine. Uh, not biological children, but my family isn't bloodline anyway. Uh, Ryan and Rachel Lodi, uh, I was involved in their marriage ceremony 10 years ago, was involved in them getting engaged 12 years ago. Um, not that I'm into slavery, but I own their firstborn. That's a whole other story. <laughs> Went up there, and I was listening to John Eldridge coming back. Uh, I love John Eldridge. Uh, John Eldridge and Wild at Heart uh, has made a significant difference in my relationship and walk with Jesus. And um, I don't think John said anything about wholehearted, but all of a sudden that word came to me. And that is not a word that was, that's in my vocabulary, so I don't know why it came up. And then Sunday in the sermon, it was like, you know, Luke was reading my mail, wholehearted came up. And then Monday morning, I wanted to put something on Facebook, uh, as I usually do on Monday morning, something spiritual to start the week out. And I turned to, I don't know why, Psalms 86 and wholehearted. So uh, we're going to talk about that if I can get past all Frank's politics and uh, boiling bunnies, which, which is what Chris is into today. It's a new game, boiling the bunnies. We're coming back live on The Truth. Tana Gertz coming. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. 
from the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios. This is Webcast One Live. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Twenty-one minutes after four, four twenty-one in the afternoon on the first day of uh, November in the Lord's year twenty sixteen. I'm J. Michael McCoy, and this is live here in Max World, and uh, we're talking about wholehearted. And wholehearted is uh, a word that's used in um, well, it's probably used several places in the Bible, but it's in Psalm eighty-six, and you have it there, uh, Chris. I do. In what is it? Verse eleven, twelve. Uh, well, the the phrase wholehearted is in the 12th verse, but um, there's a good place to jump into the 86th Psalm that says this, teach me your way, O Lord, that I might walk in your truth. Do you know that song? Can you hear that song? I think there's a, there's a song on popular Christian radio that actually has those lines. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O my, my God, with my whole heart. And I will glorify your name forever. For great is your steadfast love towards me. You have delivered my soul from the depths of Sheol. This rhymes well. So what would you call somebody who just wants to give partial heart? What would I call somebody? Honest. Well, there's a lot of Christians who are only partial hearted. I'm is, not is sure. Frank, Frank's mic does not seem very loud. He's not talking very loud. Oh. I, I'll talk like Frank talks. Yeah, let's all talk like Frank We'll just be kind of half. Okay, let's be kind whisper. of half-hearted. So, uh, wholehearted. Um, let, let, let me read you something that uh, uh, was on Facebook for me. And, uh, um, I don't know. I, I just think, I, I guess I'm a little emotional about this. Um I just think this really hit me, and I think it's important that we recognize uh, our own walk and our own ministry, because everybody who is, I think, oh, maybe I'm wrong about this. I think anybody who follows Jesus is in a ministry. Is that too bold? Well, we've all been, uh, considering the Reformation, one of the uh, out... uh the effects of the Reformation was the sainthood of all believers. That you are a saint, that Bob is a saint, that Jeb is a saint, that Chris is a saint. Don't say it. Say it. Say it. Don't say it. Even Frank. Even Frank. Oh, no. <laughs> no. 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 He's going to want to change in his business card again. Saint Frank, Frank the Saint Thomas. There is there, go, is, it, well, there is Saint Thomas. Is yeah. there a Saint Frank? Sure. Okay. Right there. Go ahead. No, so the priesthood of all believers, that, that, that we are all uh, ministers in that sense. Yeah, it's a scriptural, uh, a scriptural truth uh, preserved and fought for through the Reformation of all things. It was actually lost uh, in the Catholic Church at the time, 500 years ago. And Luther brought it back? Uh, I, you know, Luther, I think, called the church back to his word, and the word, uh, not to his word, God's word, and God's word teaches us that. That you are a, a minister called by God. I'm a pastor set forth before the whole world to be a shining example of the glory to God, glory of God. Wow! Thanks. Just yeah. me and and Bob and Frank and me and Jeb. Just us five and many other people. What's the difference between a believer and a follower? Semantics. No, no, no. You have got to be kidding me. You think that's a somatical difference? I think so. I think that most of the time people are using it that way. But I think what it, I think what you actually mean is what's the difference between someone who just professes with their mouth and then actually lives out their faith? And There's I think that's no the action difference. behind it. I think that's I think the difference is uh, someone who has a relationship with God is um, walking with the Lord uh, in a wide variety of different ways. But that faith is is active and living, and it's showing itself in in the life of a person. Um, but I think that is what a believer does. So we, we have a, a text off of the uh, Service Legends Truth text line at 515-809-0993. Thank you for sending it in. Okay, Caleb followed the Lord wholeheartedly. I believe the Hebrew word is kol, which carries the meaning of 100%. 
No impurities. In other words, there was nothing else mixed in Caleb's heart, such as fear, self-desires, doubt, etc. Thus, Caleb is described as an overcomer. Thus, the only way to wholeheartedly follow the Lord, it would take a crucified life. Ooh. Does he mail it, do, Does that person mean really crucified or just crucified in him? I mean, because we were all crucified with Christ on the cross, right? I mean, is that, is that your theology or not? Do you disagree with that? Well, yeah, crucified life is, is, is a life that you turn 100%. You turn your whole life over to the Lord and follow Who the Lord. Who can do 100%? I can't do 100%. Well, the people that are overcomers would be 100%. That would I guess be, I'm not an overcomer then. That would be the same as <laughs> dying to the flesh, Bob. Right. Be the same as dying to the right, flesh. Right, dying to flesh. That None of your desires, only the Lord's desires. I'm not that good. But he's going to make you that good. Only he can. But not till I, but not till I'm gone from this earth. Well, no. yes, but you're going to get better each every, in each and every day you follow Christ. Sanctification. Yes. Oh, I have this... Terrible joke I want to tell, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Is it about milk duds? Don't do it. Uh, Psalm 86, 11 through 12. Uh, you read it a minute ago. Why don't you read it again? Sure. Teach me your way, or teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O my O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever. Then written in the Bible, and, and this is what's strange. So in moving boxes and everything running around, um, I'm finding things that I didn't know I have, and I've lost things that I never think I'll see again. Right. And I found my daughter. So this, she's 29, so this Bible's 15 years old, probably 14, 13. It was Des Moines Christian School. It was her Bible that she had there. It's a teen Bible. Sure. And in big black bold, it said wholehearted. Praising God with all our heart means appreciating him and honoring him in all areas of our lives. We need to show our loyalty to him in every part of our life and not just in going to church. See, that's where, that's where I got on the bandwagon for a minute. Okay, here we go. Believing, following, believing, following, believing, following. I'm a follower because it's more than just church. And then it said we praise God with all our heart. I got that. I... I to me, that's called makarios. You've heard me say that word before. It's a, it's a Greek word that means God. It means God's never-ending, unstoppable love. And to me, that's a piece. That's a piece that we can't understand. Like Matthew says, was there joy in there somewhere? Uh, yeah, I could. Uh, what did I say? Love. Joy, love, and joy, but same thing. But I think. Oh, it's unstoppable joy. joy. Yes, it's unconditional love and unstoppable joy. And so we find ourselves in the midst of all kinds of trials. Every, you're having one right now. Yes. Yes, I am. Not only you, I mean the listener. No, but I'm having one too. Are you? Yeah. Everybody listening to this radio station right now is somehow aware of a trial. I think that's one of the characteristics of being a follower of Jesus. We recognize our trials. We don't, we don't spin them off and give them to somebody else that it's your fault that that happened. Or we, we, don't, we, we, don't, we don't turn down, we don't reject the responsibility we have in, if it's 1% in a difficult situation, a relationship, a drama, or whatever it is. We don't, we don't turn away from it. We recognize that those trials, at least I can speak for myself, I recognize that those, quote, trials... God's way of lifting me up, making me stronger. And, and, and that's being wholehearted is what I'm learning, not only in Psalm 86, but also through Scripture, Frank. And Paul, we're supposed to count that as a privilege and a joy. He did? Yes. Where? I can't give you the exact text. Oh, but fine. I can, Frank's just quoting. Just I'm uh, here. Just qu I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a, not a proof texter now. Can I do a Frank? Chris, is it okay with you if I do a Frank? Sure. Uh, the Bible says in Hezekiah 332 that all men should eat pork to be closer to Jesus. <laughs> sure. Hezekiah. Okay. Check it out. Uh, by the way, it's, it's I think it's James that we should count it all joy. Uh, trials and okay. that. One, in the book of James. Yeah, one, I didn't think it was Paul. Four. 
What? <laughs> James 1? 2 to 4. Okay. Well, it would have been consistent with Paul, though. He may have not. I think the verses that we think of most often are in James, but Paul would have said that, too. You know, I mean, Paul suffered a considerable amount uh, for his faith. I don't think so. You, you, don't, you don't think so? Shipwrecked, huh? burned? I don't think so. You don't think so? My mom was telling me the other day that she was reading that there was 40 people who committed not to eat and drink or something until Paul was dead. They were committed to kill Paul. Now, I don't know where she read it, but she was reading that that's how much they wanted Paul's life. He, he, didn't have a, he didn't have an easy time, but... Maybe he was just a whiner. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe he was just a whiner. I mean, what, what, can, can I be kind of serious for just a second? Oh, you're being serious. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you're a radio manager. I aspire to be, yeah. If you were managing any other radio station in Des Moines, your pay would be twice. You'd have five times the staff. You would have uh, accurate um, um, accurate figures to uh, act upon. And so I could certainly, from my standpoint, a guy who's run radio stations all my life and really good ones because of my team, not me, because of my team. It's always about the team. It's never about me. I just get to sit in that seat. The good guy that sits in my seat gives the credit to other people, and that's not me. That's a Jesus thing. Oh, that's a little bit me. I always recognized if I was smart, I'd put people around me that were smarter than I was. So I, I, I okay. But don't you think in, in a way you're, you're what did you say Paul was? Trials. Don't you think you go through your trials? Oh, sure. Compared we were, we were to somebody time. living down the street over here and running, you know, News I, Radio 1040 WHO. Well, you know, we, we talked about, uh, speaking of Psalms, we talked about a Psalm several weeks ago uh, that convicted me. Uh, and, and that was that, uh, I don't remember the Psalms, a texter sent it and reminded me. But, uh, you know, I consider the way of the wicked the way of the evildoer. And, and I'm jealous. I covet their life because it appears that things go well for them. Um, and, you know, many of us myself very much included fall prey to to covet i compare myself to other people just not a quite quite a bit uh comparing myself to what they might have so as your example um, i'm called not to compare myself to to what other people are going through because you know just because but, you, it, but don't, don't you have to to recognize the quote unquote trials no, I don't think so. No. I think we. I okay. think I think some trials are self inflicted. Sometimes they come self inflicted. I become more um, afflicted when I compare myself to others. When I say, "Gosh, so and so has it so good. I don't have it as good." I feel a self imposed infliction, affliction, or trial. And that's self imposed. That's not maybe not a trial. That's actually ingratitude. That's being ungrateful. Uh, it's comparing myself to what God has blessed other people, and I ought not do that. So it's self inflicted uh, suffering. But there are other times where I suffer and I experience difficult things that are of no doing of my own. They're they're situational. They are things that do in fact happen to me: a loss of job, loss of a home, loss of a spouse, loss of a friend, loved one. Um, all kinds of things like that. Those are those are trials that happen outside of us that that really have nothing to do with us. Uh, <clears throat> Acts twenty three two. Bob found this uh, talking about the plot to kill Paul, and it says, "When daylight come, the Jews formed a conspiracy and bound themselves with an oath not to eat or drink until they had killed Paul. More than forty of them were involved in this plot." Acts twenty three twelve. Okay, we're taking a break. We're coming back wholehearted. How is your ministry wholehearted? And most importantly, where is it lacking? And I'll tell you where mine's lacking. I mean, this wholehearted thing kind of just busted me open. We'll talk about that. It's your voice. I want to hear 244-0077 live. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High Bee, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee. 
guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24 seven. We run. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're gonna make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 430. <clears throat> Excuse me. 438, 22 minutes before the top of the hour. Uh, top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News. And then the guy who may be changing his Eucharistic theology the Bible Answer Man. You can at one triple eight. Hank, what was that thing yesterday about that? I think I'm wrong. I think I think I was wrong. I got all heated about something, but I think Dick called you were wrong. Explained it to me. Oh yeah, I'm I'm wrong frequently. Are those trials that you go through like Paul? When you're wrong, I'm wrong. No, Do you suffer. It's just uh, you feel guilt, shame. What was what's pain? that? What's that meme? Uh, it's on the internet now. I think uh, I don't know. Abraham Lincoln wrote it. I know that. He placed there's it on there's a reason for everything that happens to you, and sometimes it's that you're stupid and you're an idiot, and that's the reason it happens, or something like that. <laughs> I haven't so seen some, that one. <laughs> some, something like that. That that's mine. You know, some some trials and afflictions that I have just just come by way of my own uh, self inflicted self inflicted idiocy or mistakes that I've made and that kind of thing. But I but I recognize them, and 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 I, I'm excited, Mac, about this this idea of being wholehearted because I'm with you, man. I'm with you. You know, I love this. I love Psalm 86. I love that the the Bible says the beginning of wisdom is is the fear of the Lord. And here we have in Psalm 86, verse uh, 11, the psalmist writes, "Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart, and I will glorify your name forever." And I and I I I recognize you. You read this yesterday. The in bold description of wholehearted in your daughter. I haven't gotten down with it yet. Oh, you haven't. There's more to that that really started to convict me as well. So I'm I'm excited to hear more about this and what convicted you, and and what convicted me when you shared it the other day. Um, you know I don't know. I I, I just got to tell you I don't know because I, all of a sudden I'm driving along. I'm just outside of uh, Coon Rapids, I think. I mean, just someplace that I've. Honestly, don't think I've ever been on my way to Wall Lake. And it's dark. It's probably 9 o'clock at night. And I'm listening to John Eldridge. And I went back and listened to the last, oh, I don't know, five or six minutes of the John Eldridge CD I was listening to. And he never said wholehearted. Right. But I always tell people the visual is like the beginning of the original Star Wars movie when the, the words kind of move up from the screen. 
when the Holy Spirit talks to me, the only way I can describe it to you is, and it's never auditory, but it's a word that comes up from someplace within me, someplace, you know, down there. And it's just a word or a very short one or two word phrase. And I always get, how do I explain this? I always get it ahead of what it is. Does that make sense? Sure. It's like a new idea for you. Well, and, 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 no, I don't want to go that way. That's kind of goofy. Um, but it's it's like it's like here comes the word, and then my brain says, "Oh, that's hearted." And it's like, where did that come from? I, 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 I. It was there before I thought of it. Does that makes sense. Impressed, pressed on your mind. I, I don't know. I can't. I can't explain it. It's it's. I mean, the word is there before my brain recognized what it is and it's like god lays it there and then i go then i go oh thank you spirit but it was wholehearted and it just came up and if we're sitting in the studio you'd see my right hand is you know coming from my abdomen and up my chest going, and it just comes up and then one day something luke said in the sermon wholehearted came up and I don't think, I asked Luke if he used the word wholehearted. And I don't, he said, I don't think I did. I don't know. And then Monday morning, so this is Saturday night, Sunday morning. And then Monday morning, I open up, I, I'm going to do something on Facebook. I'm unpacking boxes. And I find my daughter, Samantha's junior high Bible from Des Moines Christian. Now, she's 29 now. So that means we're talking at least 15 years ago. And I, I turn, I just open the Bible, and it's Psalm 86, 12 and 13 talk about wholehearted, and then there's this, this part, then there's this part uh, that they've got bolded, is that right, italicized, whatever, and, and it, it reads, pray, wholehearted, praising God with all our heart means appreciating and honoring him in all areas of life. We need our loyalty to him in every part of our life. I have a problem with that. Loyalty. I, 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 to me, the definition of loyalty is you never choose another. And I don't think I ever choose another. Now, that doesn't mean I don't sin because I'm a big sinner. I mean, I'm like a big, big, like you think of the biggest donut you can get from Krispy Kreme. I'm bigger. When it comes to sin, I just, I know it. I'm not trying to be, you know, uh, 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 self-deprecating. It's just true. So it's honoring him in every area of your life. Then we need to show our loyalty to him in every part of our life. That's what I just said. Now, just not going to church. That's where it got me. Not just going to church. Because I'm in this, I'm in this, I'm in this thing in my life where I'm trying to know the difference between a believer and a follower. Now you told me you think it's somatical. Well, I was I don't I was think being, so. I was being I was being mean to you. Yeah. No, I'm So you I'm, know there's a difference. Absolutely, absolutely there's a difference. And I think I think kind of where you're going i think is you know being wholehearted means that you're following god there's areas of our lives where we think and, and one of them that comes up to me mac and maybe i'm getting ahead of you but we're i feel like we're low on time here but work is one of those areas oh yeah you know each yeah. one of us every one of us has work to do we're paid to do that work or not. i mean every one of us has work to do called by god to do that work and there's a notion in 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 the business world especially that what we do professionally, what we do to make money, what we do as business people, that's that thing over there. That's icky. Business is no good. Money is no good. That's nasty. I'm a wholehearted follower of Jesus every Sunday and Wednesday and every Bible study. But when I go to work, I'm there to make money and lots of it any way I can, the quickest, easiest way I can from whomever I can for whatever reason. And, and there has to be, I think, when we uh, really embrace this notion of wholeheartedness, we have to say, well, how does how does being a follower of Jesus apply to the work that I do, no matter what it is, whether it's radio, whether uh, it's construction, whether it's driving a dump truck or, or Bob, you, you know, you do work right now, or you're not really getting paid. You're throwing hail around, taking care of, of animals and the, and the, in the barn there with the horses that you have. Um, and that work is honorable to the Lord. Is that, does the Lord care about how you serve those horses? I would think so. Yeah. You know, it's it's not always about being paid. Right. It's about service and serving people, and that's part of God's heart, too. And there's a way to do that with integrity, with loyalty to Jesus. Would Jesus be proud of how you treat those horses? 
And that's a, that's you know that's that's a those are big questions. Would would Jesus be proud of what we do with these microphones? Ever time we use these microphones in a way that isn't honoring to Jesus? Not very much. I, I, I know we kid around and we joke around and we have some fun. Yeah. But if you if Jesus doesn't have laughs, it's not Jesus. I mean, Jesus laughs. He laughs out loud. This is the first LOL. I didn't know he texted a lot. Maybe he texted the. Yeah, you're, be, you're being kind of poopy pants now. Being poopy pants. Watch your pants to poopy pants. Poopy pants. Okay. So, me, but it, go ahead. Somebody no, I was going to. I, let me let me read you a definition of wholehearted. Since you know we bring up these words, I look it up and see what it says on the you know the computer. The adjective showing or characterized by complete sincerity and commitment. Synonyms: committed, positive, emphatic, devoted, dedicated, enthusiastic, unshakable, unswerving. What do you think, Mike? Here, it, I think that sounds like wholehearted. It does, but <laughs> but I, I don't think that's I don't think that's enough. I mean, I know that sounds weird. I think all of those words are synonymous with loyalty, and I think being wholehearted when it comes to our relationship with God is more than just being loyal to Him. I mean, we Jesus said that the whole of the law rests on these two things that we would love the lord your god with the uh, love the love that you would love the lord your god with all your heart mind soul strength with all that you've got and that you would love your neighbor just as you love yourself i feed and clothe and take care of myself do i feed and clothe and take care of my neighbor do i love my neighbor the same way that i love myself do i do i love god with everything that i have that's not just loyalty i mean there's there's you can be a loyal citizen of the united states but not everything for our country. We're coming back live here on The Truth. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, Hy-Vee, and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. 450, 10 minutes for the top of the hour. Top of the hour, Salem Radio Network News. And then Hank, the Bible Answer Man, who yesterday on this very program, Father Chris Roloff, a.k.a. Mr. Winky, said that Hank was wrong about Eucharist. Now, you want to talk about that, or have you, have you recanted oh, I that? Was, I, was, I was saying that it seemed as though he was advocating for the Catholic view of... Uh, the Eucharist. The Eucharist. Which is that when you consume the body, and when you consume the bread and the wine, you're actually 
assuming the body and right which i don't think is i don't think is is a necessary belief to have i think people make too big a deal out of that but uh possibility but that's neither here nor there and i don't think and, and, and is it essential i don't think it's essential although rome would have you think it's essential well but that's that's religion what does the bible say the bible says jesus said do this in remembrance of me and he said this is my body this is my blood he did say those words okay so if he said that frank how is that not his body and blood jesus said this is my body this is my blood do this in remembrance of me he was asking them to honor the fact that he was about to be crucified and to remember that after he was crucified they didn't eat his body and they didn't drink his blood but he said this is my body and this is my blood when he was talking about the bread and the wine yeah he when jesus wasn't lying he was being truthful but what he was saying is what we often say you know this this is the body doesn't need to change whether or not it could or does is irrelevant it doesn't need to change and rome would have you believe that it needs to change and that it does change and then if it doesn't change then you're really not participating in the sacrament so on and so forth and therefore it's got to be blessed and presented and what did hank in a say certain way he was saying that it's more than just bread and wine but he used some words that made me think he was leaning that way. But I think Dick called in yesterday. I think that was yesterday. He called in and kind of uh, pointed out to me that it, he that Hank was probably leaning more into the Luther or the Methodist. Uh, and some Presbyterians actually hold to that, where Christ is very physically present with the elements, but the, it continues to be bread and wine. So Martin Luther would have okay. uh, said that Christ was there. Anyway, it's totally not relevant to how we're having this conversation about wholehearted and I'm convicted when I think about that, Mac, because I know there are areas of my life, Mac. There are areas of my life, as I'm sure there are areas of yours, where I think I'm loyal to Jesus. I love him. He's the only one for me. There is no other God. I worship Christ and him alone. But in this area, I do this this way, and he's fine with that. He doesn't need to be involved with me. This is mine over here. I do this thing over here, and that's mine. Jesus can have me. Sunday, in every Bible study, and when I'm on the radio, he can have me. But... But these other times, this is my time, uh, as uh, said in Goonies, it's my time. It's our time down here. You know, some t- sometimes Christians get this idea that um, there are things that are sacred and there are things that are secular. And if we're going to, in my opinion is, the conviction for me when I hear the phrase whole is, if we're going to follow Christ, if we're going to follow God wholeheartedly with all of our being, then everything we do should be seen in the of what Christ would have us to do in that area. So we consider what we do at all times. Would, would, would Christ be happy with what we're doing? Would the Lord no. be happy with what we're doing? No. Well, then we should stop doing that. We should endeavor to not do those things. Was God happy with everything Jesus did? Yes. No. Mm. No. That's a, that's a problem. But anyway, continue with your idea. Okay. Do you really... If, if, if Jesus would decide me right now, Yes. No, no, I, give me a real example. Don't go hypothetical. What What do you think is something that when Jesus, Jesus called the crowd the brood of vipers? Do you think that that God was, was a horrible, horrible slang? That was that was swearing back then. That was improper language, unacceptable for uh, Gentile and Jew ears to consume. That was a bad, bad term, right? That was like m m m m m m m m. I mean, it was bad. I mean, I've I've read in theologians that that's as bad as. I mean, the F word, that's just really bad. I don't think God was happy I when do. his representation I do. on earth called somebody an MF. I do. Uh, he was disciplining, he was disciplining, disciplining his own. And discipline is a good thing. So if, I, so if I get angry, obviously off the radio, and I call you an MF... It, 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 you're going to tell me that Jesus goes, get him, Mac. No, a, Go a, get him. A viper is a snake. No, you're not going to back up on this. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Stop. I don't want to sit here and waste everybody's time arguing about yeah, semantics. Please. It's pointless. Right. The point is, the, the, the Bible actually is, is clear and actually 
says be angry and sin not. Number one, there is such a there is such a way of being angry without sinning. Righteous indignation. Uh, there is a way to righteous do that. indignation. There is a way to do that. If you don't know how to do that, don't don't do think you should be doing it. Refrain from doing that. The other thing to understand is Christ being on this earth was one hundred percent God and one hundred percent man. And what he did was a demonstration of his righteous judgment where he had full authority to do what he did. He was not in violation of God's will. He was not in violation of what was good for God to do. In fact, he himself being God was doing that which God have done. He said, I do nothing except that which I see my father in heaven doing. So when Jesus drove out those filthy, rotten SOBs, if you want to say he said, which I don't care about necessarily, and I understand that there are many folks who may be upset with the language usage, but let's put the language usage aside. When Jesus drew, drove out the people in the area of the temple that he drove out, those people were preventing people from coming to Christ. They were, they were putting a hindrance between them people and god himself and there's something i get it there is something that god does not like and that is when man decides i'm going to put up a wall between you and god that i create and i'm going to call it holy and righteous and good and i'm going to call it what god wants but really what that thing is doing is preventing you from coming to god and jesus was right to be upset those people who were doing that who were preventing people from coming to him uh, okay <laughs> I tell you that I think that was the human part of Jesus. I don't think that was the human part of Jesus. I just do, for what it's worth. Okay, that's going to wrap up uh, our time for a Wednesday or a Tuesday. Boy, it's going to be a long week. You know the feeling? I know Jebediah does. Little technical problems here. Uh, thank you for listening to 99.3, The Truth. Uh, I can't really say we're brand new anymore, but we're only 14 months. Oh, no, wait. July, August, September, October. <sighs> We're 18 months now. We're 18 months old. I tell you what, and this station is growing, and 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 the listeners bless me all the time. You know, the 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 home office or the never mind. Anyway, I'm just giggly happy. Thank you so much for listening, Frank. No, I was just pointing at the clock. Oh, okay. Well, I know what time it is. It's 4:58:08. Roll off nine, ten. Okay. So we didn't quite get through wholehearted yet. I want to talk about it more. <laughs> well, we probably will this week. Good. Um, yeah, because we're, we, we haven't got to our work, our relationships, and then the big line at the end just blew me away. That's what convicted me. Okay, we're coming back. Remember tonight, uh, go home. Have you ever done it? Have you ever done what I'm asking? Try it tonight. Pick a little resentment. Give it to Jesus. Ask for forgiveness. And know that as you forgive, you will be forgiven. I'll see you at church. <laughs>